welcome to Discovery Lab Online. My name is Amber Shive, and today we're going to be talking about STEM projects in the engineer design process. STEM projects are one of my favorite ways to get my students and my kids to work on their problem solving skills. Because the great thing about a STEM project is there's not just one way to solve a challenge. There are so many different ways. It also allows your students and your kids to flex their creativity muscles. And it also works with teamwork, which is always a great thing to work on. So in a STEM project, you're working on science, technology, engineering, and math. And all of those things come together in order to come up with a solution. Now, for our STEM project that we worked on today is we worked on building birdhouses out of recycled materials. And so the first thing you always want to ask yourself in a STEM project is you want to ask yourself what you're trying to accomplish. And that ask is always really good to compare it to a real world experience so that kids can easily relate to it. Now, it can be a real world experience to them if it's something that they've related to in a story. Like, for instance, there's a lot of content that you can find out, out on the webs on websites about fairy tale STEM projects. Now, fairy tale STEM projects take stories that kids are very familiar with and allows them to solve a problem for one of the characters. Like, for instance, in Goldilocks and the Three Bears, there's a STEM activity where you repair the little bear's chair after Goldilocks had broken it. So there's all sorts of different things that you can try out. But for our project today, we were designing birdhouses out of recycled material that we could find around our house. We were trying to upcycle the materials for Earth Day. That was our whole plan. And so the first part of the design process is to ask yourself what you're trying to do. And in this case, we were trying to create a birdhouse out of recycled materials. Now, whenever you're setting up your challenge, there's two other things that you can set up. One is a constraint and one is a criteria. Now, the constraints can be as simple as these are the supplies you're able to use or this is the amount of time you have to create it. You can come up with all sorts of create constraints. You could even come up with a constraint that you're not allowed to talk at all while you're coming up with your creation. And then that adds a whole lot of tenacity into your groups because they're trying to come up with different ways to communicate with each other other than verbally. There's all sorts of constraints that you can put on a project. And so those are really important because it allows them to start thinking about different ways to be creative, whether it's with resources or with their time or whatever it may be. And the other thing that you can think about whenever you're setting up a STEM project is your criteria. What must the project have? If it's a birdhouse, does it have to have a perch? If it's a birdhouse, does it have to have a place to put food? Does it have to be able to hang on a tree? All of those things allow you to be more specific and more intentional in what you're doing. Our plan today with the recycled birdhouses is all we were trying to do was to upcycle material and turn it in from recycled material and upcycle it into a birdhouse. That was our whole intention. So the first thing you want to have your junior engineers do is to ask themselves what they're trying to do. So in this case, the answer was they're trying to create a birdhouse out of recycled materials. Okay. Once they have their ask and they have their answer, you want them to start thinking about what type of bird are you designing that house for? Does it need to have a perch? Is it gonna have a bird bath? Is it need, does it need to have room for a nest? All of those things they can start thinking about. And then they get to start imagining. Step two is imagining. During step two is when you wanna pull out all of the supplies that they can choose from. That way, whenever they're thinking those big, big, imaginative brainstorm thoughts, they can see all of the materials that they can use. And if you want to stipulate how much of the material you can use, you absolutely can do it. But so I always like to spread it all out so that they can see everything. So, so far they've asked and they've imagined, then they're going to start planning. So whenever it comes to the planning step, one of the things that I love to use is a story tablet. They have it in this flip kind like this, or they also have it in composition books. The reason why I love a story tablet is because at the top, there's room to draw a picture, and then below it, there's lines that they can add writing. These are fantastic for your early learners, but they're also fantastic for your older kids too, because you want them thinking about what it's gonna look like, as well as writing down what supplies they're gonna use. So whenever they get to the planning stage, you want them to sketch out a picture, and you also want them to write or label the things in the picture that they're gonna be needing for their creation. So in this case, for our project today, we pulled out bottles, plastic bottles, we pulled out sticks from the yard, we found all sorts of different things. And so my daughter, who was working on this project, she decided she wanted to use a bottle, 
And then she gave some details about what she was going to put on it. So, so far you've asked, you've imagined, and you've planned. Now that you have a plan, you get to start creating. That's when they get to start bringing that idea to life. And that's one of my favorite things to see. And so they start gathering up those materials and they start using them, which is the coolest thing. Now, inevitably, whenever they start creating in a STEM process, they may realize that their design isn't turning out the way that they expected it to. Things may be heavier. They may not be sticking as well as what they thought. Tape may not hold the way that they expected it to. And that's absolutely fine because one of the things in the engineer's design process and in STEM projects is we encourage our students to go back and improve what they're doing. How can you improve your design as you're working through it? What would make it better? What could you change? And we always talk about redesigning. And that's why the engineer notebook is so important because students have the ability to go back, revisit it and decide, okay, wait, my first plan didn't work. What can I do to make that better? And that's the coolest thing about a STEM project is because that's what real engineers do. Real engineers are constantly improving their plans. They're talking to other engineers to see what other engineers have done to overcome something. And they're taking those ideas and putting it to work in their model. And so after you're creating, you immediately start improving. After you get it to be what you think you want it to be, then you're going to test it. And that test in this case is to see if a bird could fit in it and all sorts of different things. And so whenever you're testing your STEM project, you also get to go back and improve it. If it didn't turn out the way that you want it to, go back and work on it some more until you get it to that point. And then the very last step of the engineer's design process is my favorite. It's the sharing process. That's when all of the engineers take whatever their project is, and in this case, it's their recycled birdhouses, and they take those and they share them and they talk about their idea and they talk about their process of getting there. What did it look like in their first sketch? How did they improve it and how did they get to where they are? And so I wanna show you what my daughter came up with today when we were doing this challenge for Earth Day. So she took a Coca-Cola bottle and she cut a hole into it and she added camouflage to it as she went. And she took some of the soap flowers that we had just in our pile of designs and she added a place to put the food at the top. But this wasn't her first plan. Her first plan, if you notice, was a lot more simple. And then she went back and made a lot of changes as she went. So this is one example of the upcycled, redesigned birdhouse. And then another one that my son came up with is he decided to turn his birdhouse, and it used to just be a coffee box, into a log cabin birdhouse because he wanted his to blend in. So that's the thing that's the coolest thing about STEM projects is that they're all gonna turn out completely different. But here's the deal. Did they accomplish the task? Did they use recycled material to turn it into a birdhouse? They absolutely did. Do they look completely different? Absolutely. Did they go through the engineer's process? Yes. All STEM projects have that great ability to let kids do their own ideas. They let kids create into something completely incredible. And there's so many great resources out there. If you have a cool STEM project that you'd like to share with us, please put it in the comments below. If you want to see more STEM family videos, be sure to like this video and follow us on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I happily answer any of your STEM questions if you put them down in the comments. Have a great day.